So as I said in the introduction, we're going to design some great programs in this course. Some games, some animations, some information visualizations, some web programs, really great stuff. But the thing is, you got to walk before you can run. And in the same way, we've got to learn some basic building blocks before we can build these great programs. So that's what we're going to do for the next few videos, is learn some basic building blocks out of which we're going to build bigger programs. We're going to try to do it quickly because it isn't that exciting. But we're going to try not to do it too quickly because we want everybody to be able to stay with us. So if maybe you've programmed before and this video seems a little slow, then feel free to speed it up. But most of the people who take this class haven't programmed before, so we're going to try to go a good speed for that. And if, it, and if it is a little too fast, then you can replay the part of the video that you need to replay. As we go through it, I'd encourage you to have Dr. Rackett open and follow along with the examples that I'm going to do. So here we go. When we start Rackett for the first time, we have to tell it what language we're going to use. Your racket may have started up already saying beginning student language down in this lower left corner. And if it did, then you're all set. You don't need to do anything. But if it didn't, then go to the language menu, say choose language, make sure the how to design programs part is opened up, and choose beginning student. The way you'll get to this menu will be slightly different in Windows, of course, but you're going to want to go to the language menu to do that. So go to the language menu and select beginning student language and then you'll be all set to go. Now that that's done, we can get started. The top part of Ragged here is called the definitions area and the bottom part is called the interaction area. We're going to start by working up in the definitions area and we're going to start by writing a simple arithmetic expression. I'll just put plus three four. This is how we're going to say to add 3 to 4 in the beginning student language. And if I ask Dr. Rackett to run that short program, it will, and down here it get, tells me that the result of that program is 7, which isn't so surprising. Adding 3 to 4 should produce 7. This is what's called an expression, and in the bottom window we have what's called a value. And the way Rackett is working is we give it expressions, and it evaluates the expression to produce the value. Expressions can be more complicated. For example, we could say plus 3 times 2, 3. And we can run that program, and no surprise, it produces 9. We can make expressions that are even more complicated than that, or use other primitive operators. Here we'll just divide 12 by times 2, 3. And unsurprisingly, that will get us two. So what we've seen so far is that the rule for the way we form an expression is open parenthesis, the name of a primitive operator like plus or times or slash, and then any number of other expressions followed by a closed parenthesis. And there's another rule that says expressions can be actual values, so numbers themselves can be expressions. Let me show you another thing we can do. We can take all of this, and if we say to Racket, comment that out with semicolons, then it'll put a semicolon in front of each of those lines. And what that tells Racket is, for now, it should ignore everything on a line after the first semicolon. So if I would run this program now, as far as Racket's concerned, there's no expressions in there at all, and so there's no values that come out. Let me tell you about two more primitive operations on numbers, and then I'll ask you to do an exercise. The first one is SQR, we call it square. And if I take square of three, and I'll show you another one here at the same time, square root of 16, and I'll run these two. And what you're seeing is that square squares the number, and square root produces the square root of the number. Okay, we've seen how to form expressions. And we've seen a number of primitives that operate on numbers, primitives like plus and times and divide and minus and square and square root. What I'd like to do now is give you an exercise that you can use to help reinforce what we've learned so far. We'll have exercises like this throughout the videos in this course. I'd like to encourage you to take the time to do them just to test your understanding of what's come so far. 
So here's the exercise. I've got it in a separate file. And let me just explain this big box. Racket has a thing called a comment box, which you can actually add to a file yourself under the insert menu. And the way to think of a comment box is, see this semicolon here? It's basically saying everything in the box is a comment. And what's also neat about Racket is that you can put images in the middle of files. That's just an image that I cut and pasted. At any anyway, rate, here's the exercise. Go ahead and work on it. Write the expression. And when you're done, restart the video. Let me just quickly show you how I think about it. Given the formula, I know that I need to square 3, and I need to square 4, and I need to add those together, and I need to take the square root of that whole thing. And if I run that, I get 5, sure enough. Let me say a word here about math. The Pythagorean theorem here is pretty much the hardest math we're going to do in this whole course. And that's important because you need to know that to design a lot of programs, you don't need to know a lot of math. You can be a very good program designer without knowing a lot of math. There are certain kinds of programs, programs in graphics or vision or machine learning, where you do need to know a lot of math. That's because you need to understand that domain. We won't do a lot of math in this course, though. The Pythagorean theorem here is about the hardest we'll do. There is, however, one little detail I need to tell you, a little bit more math, and then we'll go on. If I take the square root of 2 and run that, look at this funny thing Racket is telling me that I see. Why is that? Well, you may know that the square root of 2 is an irrational number, and what it means to be an irrational number is that it takes infinite space to write the number down. Well, computers are not infinite in size, they're quite finite in size, so it has no way of representing a number that takes infinite space to write it down. So what this means, this sharp sign i in a number means it's an inexact number. It's telling you that the number is pretty close to this number here, but not exactly. And you may see numbers like that crop up. Don't worry about it, it'll usually come up in some kinds of graphics programs, and you won't be able to see the difference between the two numbers anyways. Okay, now you've seen how to write expressions that operate on numbers. At this point, you should have a pretty good sense of how to write such expressions and an intuitive understanding of what they're going to evaluate to. In the next video, we're going to look at the more precise rules that Racket uses for evaluating them. You may wonder at this point, are there more primitives that operate on numbers? And the answer is that there are lots, lots and lots and lots, far more than you could hope to learn at this point. But if you want to discover some of those primitives, I suggest you jump ahead to the video on discovering primitives that comes later this week. Of course, it's also fine to just stick with the primitives we learn now, plus and times and minus and square and square root.